University of Chicago stretches across 217 acres in the city's south side neighborhood of Hyde Park, Kenwood. These 217 acres are full of prestigious teachers, 6,306 hardworking students, and renowned Gothic style buildings. Campus is primarily built within the street boundaries of South Cottage Grove Avenue, East 55th Street, South Stony Island Avenue, and East 61st Street, placing it right next to Lake Michigan and an arm's reach from the city's skyline. University has become synonymous with success, with over 90 Nobel Prize winners, a 7.9 acceptance rate, and gifted alumni including past President Barack Obama, this school has made a prestigious name for itself. The name and the atmosphere of the University of Chicago has made for itself did not happen that seamlessly. After the closure of the original campus in Brownsville, the campus reopened its doors in a new location, which was situated in the neighborhood of Hyde Park, Kenwood. In 1890, the university's first building was inspired by the Gothic architecture in England. This inspiration incorporated the use of spires, towers, grotesques, and cloisters. The university's final touches were done by landscape architect Frederick Law Olmsted. The university and its surrounding neighborhoods have come a long way since 1890. Though the Gothic architecture has stayed consistent, the culture in the surrounding neighborhood, Hyde Park Kenwood, has not. This is a story of urban renewal that was pushed and initiated by the University of Chicago in order to ensure a prosperous future for their university and campus. World War II was seen as a way to bring the nation back together after the tragic decade of the 1930s. In 1945, the boys would finally return back to the United States as victors. This return would lead to a boom. This boom led to the nuclear family and women going back into their domestic roles as housewives. First thing I'm going to do after the war is get a vacuum cleaner. This shift back to traditional values would draw primarily white families to the suburbs. In many cases, this meant households with higher incomes moved their families to the suburbs as well. This suburbanization led to a lack of funding in many urban areas. This lack of funding would leave areas in these cities blighted. The issue of blight was something on everyone's minds post-World War II. It seemed to be affecting the whole nation. The University of Chicago was not an exception. In many ways, the university was thriving post-World War II. The professional education was influencing national socioeconomic systems, and their advanced scientific research was nationally acclaimed. As schooling went, the University of Chicago seemed to be doing everything right, but they did face one problem. Their location in Hyde Park, Kenwood, posed a potential threat to the future of this institution. 1952, an increase of violence in Hyde Park, Kenwood began to occur. One of the first instances was of Samuel Unnermeyer and his wife, Joan, who was a psychology student at the University of Chicago. On Sunday, May 11, 1952, an armed man broke into their home and robbed the couple, along with abducting Joan. He managed to steal $7,000 worth of cash and jewelry. This tragic event began the discussion of how to handle the rising crime rates in the Hyde Park, Kenwood neighborhoods. In 1952, the Chicago Police Department's annual report for the year accounted for 4,140 offenses in these neighborhoods. This made the areas surrounding the University of Chicago the second highest crime rate in the city. The Hyde Park Herald revealed that the Hyde Park and Kenwood areas made up 23% of all of Chicago's crime rates in a month. While crime rates were skyrocketing and blight was supposedly spreading in the community, the University of Chicago was taking on some new problems due to these difficulties. Because of the violence and poor conditions of the neighborhoods surrounding the university, there was a 60% drop in applications, and the University of Chicago's chancellor had to cut his budget from $11.2 million to $1.2 million. The university and its neighborhood were in disarray. On March 27, 1952, a Hyde Park community meeting was held at the University of Chicago. Residents of the community and Chancellor Kempton wanted to discuss this growing problem. The conclusion was this problem seemed threatening to the residents and institutions alike. Lawrence Kempton, Chancellor of the University of Chicago, created a committee called the Southeast Chicago Commission following this meeting. The purpose of this group was to attack against illegal conversions 
old houses and apartments. Kimpton was referencing the shift of housing that started to be built in the late 1940s, post-World War II, in Hyde Park, Kenya. The neighborhood was transforming into streets full of public housing projects. The University of Chicago Chancellor Kimpton and concerned residences, these housing units were a sign of the start of life. This was caused because of the 1948 landmark Supreme Court case of Shelley v. Kramer, which did not allow racial restrictions in neighborhoods. Many African Americans moved to the Hyde Park Kenwood area after, which expanded and spread the previous Black Belt that had been present for decades. The Black Belt was a chain of neighborhoods on the Chicago South Side, where over 75% of Chicago's African American population lived. The Black Belt became so populated with African Americans because of the restrictions whites placed on selling to black people. The few neighborhoods open to black tenants are what made up the Black Belt. After the Supreme Court case, the Black Belt expanded and began to spread towards the Hyde Park Kenwood area. This influx of African Americans conserved previous residents. In response to residents' concern, the South Side Planning Board and the Hyde Park Kenwood Community Conference published a study. The study revealed that conditions within the areas vary significantly from neighborhood to neighborhood. The report showed the threat of blight and the solution they came up with was that most of the dwellings should be replaced. They wanted to demolish these old buildings and replace them with new housing. The ultimate goal of the SEC and Kimpton was that the urban renewal process would not only change the University of Chicago's environment, but it would benefit the local community as well by establishing a more appropriate community. May 1955 is when the start of demolition occurred of deteriorated buildings. The newly elected Mayor Richard J. Daley is at the groundbreaking demolition. His presence is significant because during Daley's time in office, he would be a huge supporter of urban renewal in Chicago. This first demolition is at 5456 South Blackstone. After this demolition of this building occurred, the urban renewal process will be put in the hands of the University of Chicago. Jack Meltzer led the university and urban renewal team. He drew up maps that labeled where clearance would occur and spot renewal. The university would continue to move forward with urban renewal from this initial demolition. They would tear down student housing, which was located on 58th Street, boarding South Cottage Grove. This was the only a month after the initial demolition. The school was trying to keep the process moving forward, but they faced much opposition. Many elitist newspapers like the Defender and the Archdiocesan did not want this integrated neighborhood. Though the process was being stalled, the university continued to take strides towards development. They would buy apartment buildings in the neighborhood and redo them for the usage of student housing. The land they cleared was used for extracurricular activities. The Herald provided the details of the urban renewal plan. First and foremost is the hope that all public money spent in our neighborhood will stimulate a program of private rehabilitation, which will stem the growth of blight and increase the physical life of residents in Hyde Park, Kenwood. To help stimulate this growth, there will be an extensive expenditure of public money for new housing, new streets, new schools, playgrounds, and parks. The Urban Renewal Plan proposes the demolition of areas running along 55th, Cottage Grove, 47th Street, and Lake Park. This program has been the accumulation of many years of effort in Hyde Park. On November 7, 1958, the Urban Renewal Project would officially be approved by the City Council of Chicago. This announcement and finalization was the beginning of a chain of urban renewal. August 13, 1958, the University Apartments on 55th and Island were built. December 18, student bus services on Woodlawn were established. In 1959, on May 26, Walgreens signed a lease in Hyde Park Shopping Center. August 1st, University Apartments were breaking ground. October 1st, Hyde Park Shopping Center is built and at the time was holding the largest grocery store in Chicago. In 1960, Pierce Tower Dormitory and Dining Facility was built. On November 9th, Shoesmith School breaks ground. In 1961, November 29th, the Hyde Park Police Station closes for renewal. There was a continuous lineup of urban development occurring one after another. Efforts towards urban renewal have not stopped since this period. The University of Chicago and Hyde Park Kenwood tend continue to make strides towards a more beautiful and integrated community every day. Unlike many urban renewal projects, this one was not trying to achieve segregation. The SEC had a goal of creating an interracial community that was peaceful and productive. 
When the project was done, the character of Hyde Park and the University of Chicago were changed forever. They were no longer blighted areas with depleted buildings and crime. This area was now full of beauty. The streets were filled with new homes, new schools, new open areas and parks, shopping centers, improved streets, and other new and improved facilities.